I'm gonna build an app with JetGPT. And honestly, guys, that's gonna be a really interesting experiment because I have no idea about app development. I have no idea about coding. So let's see, let's test JetGPT to its real capabilities and see if it is really able to help me develop an app if I have like literally no idea about code. So I think it's gonna be really interesting. The idea is gonna be we build a Thai vocab trainer. So the user has basically its interface, taps on the flashcard and then gets a translation. So you're gonna basically build a Thai vocab trainer. And I think this is honestly gonna be interesting. So let's go right into it. So as you can see here, I have uh, already prepared this prompt uh, in ChatGPT4. So um, I'm just gonna quickly read it out here. I want you to act as a Swift developer. Uh, I'm moving the counterpart who will create whatever you tell me to do. Keep in mind, I don't have any idea about Swift or other coding experience. So you have to, to explain everything step by step so you can understand it. I want you to build a type of train of iOS the app should have this functionality. And um, basically here, if a few things because like the prompt, how you design a prompt is really important. So as you can see, I wanted to act as a Swift developer. That's quite important because ChatGPT works really good with this kind of prompt. You can do basically anything. You can say act as a Excel sheet, act as a Linux console. So uh, there are like quite a few things that you can do with that. We basically give JetGPT a role, assign it a role, and that way it can just work much better. And uh, as another important thing, I wrote explain step by step. So this should make sure that JetGPT is explaining everything really step by step so I can just follow the instructions. And uh, yeah, so let's have a quick overview about the app that I wanna build. Um, we have basically one main page um, for the flashcard, the user gets a word in English and clicks on the card and it turns and the translation gets revealed. So it's basically a really simple concept, nothing too difficult. After turning card, two buttons appear with green check mark and red cross. So this is just like to click OK, I knew the word, I didn't know the word. Then we also have here, the World Cup trainer should be based on a spaced repetition model. So that's basically just this basic um, model that you usually have with stuff like that. Um, so you have like different boxes and uh, depending if you knew the word or if you didn't know the word, it gets like in the next box and depending on that it gets repeated more or less. So I think ChatGPT should understand that and I just wrote about the design, the app should have a simple clean design. I'm actually really curious how the design is going to be because that's a fact that is kind of, you know, like difficult to describe. I think this is going to be huge as soon as we have the possibility to upload pictures to ChatGPT because that's going to be huge. I mean, imagine you could just design your UX design and upload ChatGPT, say, okay, I want my app to be like this. And I mean, that's amazing. So yeah, sadly not available yet, but yeah, let's work with what we have. And that just wrote the vocabulary words are going to be provided in a CSV Excel sheet. So we can just like give them a whole bunch of words and it's always gonna work. We can always update that. So that's pretty simple. That's basically the prompt. We use ChatGPT4. That's gonna be, make sure that we just use the newest version and ChatGPT got a lot of upgraded features in ChatGPT4, it just got more accurate. It's just able to understand more complex things, which uh, is gonna be important, I think, in this case. So um, let's hit the enter button and let's see what we get here. Okay guys, so ChatGPT is writing here its code and it's it's gonna do a pretty good job. So it's uh, just suggesting to install Xcode first, which is apparently uh, the, the software that you would use to, to code in Swift. I already know that, but um, that's a thing that is definitely nice that it's writing it here, because if you're really like someone who doesn't know anything, it's it's amazing. So after this, I could open it and create a new project. Wow, that's amazing. It's really giving like perfect instructions what I should do. Import the CSV file to store the new cam. And yeah, we got also here a bunch of code for different things. And it's still writing actually. And I actually think it's stopped. So in this case, it got too long. So we can just write continue here and then it should basically continue writing the code. That's because for each prompt, it has like a limited capability of text that it can write, but it basically remembers that prompt. And if you just write continue, it basically continues what it left off. So it seems like we're getting here something for the flashcard and another content view. Yes, um, we will see how that works. I have no idea. I think while ChatGPT is writing this, we can already start actually. So uh, it's all Xcode. Well, I already did that. So create a new project. I already opened Xcode here. So create a new project. Okay, let's do that. So we have here iOS app. I think this is also saying it here. And choose app and iOS tab. Perfect. Name it project Thai. Vocab trainer. Okay, let's just name it like that. Make sure to select Swift as language. Okay, so select this. 
product name, okay, Swift, and I think that's pretty much it. Let's down, click create. Okay, let's do it next. Ah, okay, it asks us for saving location, so I already ordered something, and voila, there's our project. And voila, we have here our app, Hello World, that's pretty cool, to be honest. So yeah, that's our app. Okay, let's go to the next step. Importing the CSV file. So you need to import that in the project, drag and drop the file in the project navigator in Xcode. Make sure to copy items if needed, select them and click finish. Okay, so in this case, I already prepared a little file for this. Um, so we have here some workups. So let's quickly get this file and import it. So guys, as you can see, uh, this is basically the file that I prepared. We have here an ID for like each word, have like a woman, Queen, man, push high, and like a row for English, a row for type, and um, that's basically what it looks like. So we just would provide all our words in a file like that, and um, it should be able to do that. So let's save that to make sure it's here. And then let's get here our project and import the file. So I think we can just drag and drop that in here. And it actually said here we should make sure that Make sure copy items if needed is selected. So, okay, let's crack this and finish. And then we should have here our translation input. We also see, okay, it seemed to work, I think. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay, cool. Then we are done with step three. Okay, read data from CSV file. We need to create a function to read data. Da, da, da. Okay, so it seems like we need to create a file uh, for this app that makes sure that the CSV file is uh, read and be inputted correctly so we have access to this data. So it provided us the code here already, that's pretty cool. Um, it's I just love that, it's amazing, you can just say copy code and that's it. And the thing is, um, I'm actually not sure how to create a new Swift file. So let's maybe ask a question, how do I create a new Okay, so we got here our instruction and it's it's pretty fascinating. Also here, for example, it's a give your new Swift file a name, for example, CSV parser, space repetition Swift, or flash code new Swift. So it actually took reference on the code here because it's exactly the files that it asked us before or to create. So it literally takes reference to the thing that we said before. So that's pretty cool. Okay. Go to the Excel Navigator, right click on the folder. Okay, so um, I think we have to go here, file, new, and file. Is that right? Okay, and then we can here select Swift file if I'm right. Okay, source and click next. Okay, great. So next and create. And voila, we have here our first Swift file. Pretty cool. So. Now let's go here and copy that code literally one on one. I think we might have to delete this because it's already in here as we see. And well, that's the first thing <laughs> that it's as easy as that. So that's pretty cool. Okay, let's move on to the next step. Next, we'll create a simple space repetition. We'll create a Swift file called space repetition Swift. So we do the same thing again, create a new file, Swift file, insert our name, create. Pretty, pretty simple. And then we got here some code again. Yeah, just gonna copy that, gonna make sure that this is empty. And we have here our space repetition model. Pretty cool. It's also interesting uh, that it actually gives here some, some comments about um, the code. So that's, uh, that's definitely cool that even that is included. So that's, that's nice. Okay, next step. Create a flashcard view. Okay, I think in this case we might have to select here Swift view because that's actually a view. So um, next, and in this case we have the problem that this is actually separated. So we will try to copy this together. So this is the first part basically. And then we get a copy here. A second part. I just really hope that this matches together. Okay, seems to be alright. No errors. That's always good. So that's cool. And yes, um, now let's let you just stop. You're basically done with that step already. So that's pretty cool. Uh, create a new content view. Okay, now we'll create a main interface of the app content view Swift. Replace the existing code. Okay, that's cool. That's actually fun. Like, literally, like, imagine coding is always like that. Imagine actually also, like, how cool is that? Like, just for learning coding. I mean, you could just literally say, okay, I want to build that and that. 
And basically on a way of doing that, you can always ask questions and ask to explain you this and that step. So I think that's pretty cool if you want to learn coding actually. But anyways, let's move on. Let's call it content view creates. We already have a content view. Okay, I see, I see. We already have here the content view. Okay, I think we can, I guess we can just um, the replace this code because it's basically already here. I think this is the standard view that is created. Okay, we get here a couple of error messages. The first error messages. I don't know what all of this uh, means. I guess we're gonna ask ChatGPT, but let's finish first everything that is it asks us to do. What else? Customize the appearance, make clicks. Open the assets folder in the project and add a custom background color. Okay, I think this is not really required in this case because bubble is just white, basically. This is like the, the, the style that I want to go for, like just a really simple and clean style. So um, I think it just looks like it's by default white, so that's not a real thing we have to do. Run it. Now I can build, run it. Uh, okay. Wow. It's amazing. It even gives me instructions where I can find the button. That's pretty cool. Honestly, that's pretty cool. But um, as we actually saw here, we got here two error messages and I have apparently no idea what that means. So let's just see if we can copy that and ask ChatGPT. I got those errors. Send this and let's see what we're gonna get here now, if it's able to solve that, hopefully. Okay, so it says my apologies for the oversight. You need to make a space repetition class, conform the protocol to do this, simply add this after the class name in the space ring. Here's the updated space repetition class. Okay, that's pretty cool. It just updates the code for us. So we can probably use that right away. That's amazing. That's honestly amazing. Okay, we got here the code. Pretty cool. Um, So we can just replace that, I think. Copy the code. A space repetition. Delete all of this here. And ice in the code. It did not work. Okay, 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 okay. We got rid of those. We got rid of those errors. That's pretty cool. Uh, what do you have there? Self. Okay, so we have here, well, we basically solved the other error, but got, got more errors. Got those errors. So let's see. I apologize for confusion. I fixed the errors. You need to make some changes in the confuse. Okay. Honestly, isn't that quite scary how, how good that shit works? Like, I mean, you just literally provided like the error message and is able to instantly give you a new code and an updated thing basically that's that's pretty cool actually also thing on ChatGPT 4 i think it's actually quite fast considering that open ai themselves that actually it's gonna be slow it's it's quite fast to be honest but um let's let's see it it mentioned here like okay i need to replace this and add this basically but then it said like okay here is just the updated content view file amazing so let's see until let's wait until it's done it's always like, yeah, you can just drink a cup of coffee while you're waiting. And it's quite funny. Okay, I think it's almost done. I'm excited. I'm really excited about this app. I'm really excited. It's really cool. Okay, with these changes, errors should be resolved. Okay, let's just go here in here. Copy that stuff and add this. So what are we going to get? Missing argument for parameter string. It seems there is some problem again. Okay, let's see what's missing arguments in call. Insert words. Actually, two other errors, so let's only write them here and see what it is doing. Also, the thing I just noticed is usually they had this thing here that you had 25 messages in GPT-4 within three hours. Now it seems like they removed this. Um, that's interesting. That's pretty cool. If you can have like more requests now, I mistakenly added an unnecessary state object property with an X-ray analyzer. Now I've been doing this for like 25 minutes-ish. And it's, 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 it's pretty fast, to be honest. Let's see how long it takes us to actually get this app running. Because apparently we have some errors, but it's it's quite fast considering that. Okay, we got a new code. This should fix the code. Okay, give it another try. I'm gonna delete this here. Add the new code. And let's see what is gonna happen. It's loading, it's loading. No, oh, another error. What is the error again? Self. It seems like we have the same problem again. Very interesting. Self is used before and all store properties are initialized. Let's just send it back a message. So let's see. We got here corrected um, thing that we can probably replace here right away. I actually just realized something. A stupid mistake that was actually like meant by me kind of as well because I think, I don't know, did ChatGPT ask for the file name? I think they didn't. It didn't say anything. We need the function and array first. The following code. Yeah, because apparently there's 
the file has to have a name, right? And the code needs to know which file we're actually using. So I didn't pay any attention to that. Um, that's so my mistake, but ChatGPT also didn't tell me to be careful with that. So let's replace first this initializer code. Let's submit this part here. It seems to work now. Wow, that's interesting. Quit unexpected. Okay, this is not what we want. It seems like we got a, got a bit bigger error. It's just ask ChatGPT. How should I name the CSV file? Okay. Well, yes, it's exactly this. So, okay, it's even saying as again how we can do that. I think we can stop that because we found the problem. So let's just rename our file here. Translation exactly. Vocabulary CSV. And then it should have basically the same. Okay, guys, um, it seems I kind of messed a little bit up because I get actually an error um, from Xcode that I basically crashes and that I need to update my macOS. And I just asked also uh, ChatGPT what it means. I got this error code and it said the same update your macOS. Um, so yes, I kind of messed up because I recently updated my Xcode, but not my macOS yet. And as we know, Apple has sometimes those amazing things that you need to update everything. Otherwise it doesn't work. And that's exactly the case. And so I can't really, I mean, it's going to be displayed, but it's not as it's supposed to be here. Yes, that kind of sucks a little bit. So it seems like I need to update my macOS first and then I can continue to create this video here. <laughs> okay, guys, after a little trial and error, I figured out that I had to do an update. I did the update and now it actually works. So let's see what we got here. We have here the app and it works. We have here this the vocab file on it and we get that translation. So that's pretty cool basically. One thing that I noticed though, we asked them for button, right? We asked ChatGPT to add us some buttons where we can get to the next file. So um, this isn't really there. So it seems like there happened something. I don't know. We probably have to ask for that. Um, but otherwise, we have a simple functionality. So let's ask ChatGPT about that. Let's fix the button issue in the content view. Okay, so we got a new code for the body of the view. So let's see where we can actually... Okay, so we should uh, be able to replace this with this code. And let's see what's going to happen. Nothing really. That's interesting. So I'm just going to remove that now and just make it really simple that the button's just like always there. Uh, because there's some some problem going on that I'm not, not really sure about that. Let's just let the buttons appear all the time, then it's kind of easier. So let's wait for the new code. And I'm just basically just removing this if statement, I think. Okay, so uh, the button issue is now resolved. We have here our app, we can click on it, have um, that translation. And can I click yes or no? And depending on that, we get it in the next box, basically. So yeah, that's basically a simple couple trainer. Uh, we, there's apparently a lot of room for improvement and uh, we definitely gonna do that in another video where we're gonna work more on the design. Let's see what we can really get out of this because like that's not really pretty. Like that would be nice to have like a real turn of the card actually and the better button animation and stuff like that. So there's just a lot of stuff still to improve and also in regards to functionality there's still a lot of room for stuff we can do. That's it for this video. We definitely saw that it's possible to create an app with ChatGPT. I mean that that is pretty cool. It took me like around out the time of solving like this issue with my Mac OS system. I think like one hour to create this simple app, which is pretty cool actually. We saw it worked pretty well. There are sometimes some things, some issues with like errors, stuff like that, but you can always like enter the error and then you basically get the corrected code and it, it works at some point at least. So that's at least pretty cool. And I think as long as you have a simple app idea or something like this, you can do a lot of stuff with ChatGPT. And I'm really excited about the next video because then we get to improve the design and let's see if we can ultimately publish this app in the app store. That would be also really cool. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this video, leave me a like and subscribe to this channel to not miss out any videos. With that, see you in the next one.